Greetings, Toby Kohler back again with the Mayo Men's Health Moment, Rochester, Minnesota. Today we're going to talk about erectile dysfunction risk factors, or what are the causes of problems with erections. So what are the risk factors, or causes, that lead to erectile dysfunction? Well, typically, ED causes are lumped into two buckets, physical and psychological causes. Interestingly, in the 1950s and 60s, the work of Masters and Johnson tended to blame psychological problems on about 90% of men with ED. Now, in the modern day, we know that this is probably exactly reversed, and 90% of erectile dysfunction comes from physical problems, whereas 10% is purely psychological. That being said, they often affect one another, and both psychological causes can cause physical problems and vice versa where performance anxiety can become a real thing if you have one bad night uh, with problems with erections. It's also important to remember that age does not necessarily cause ED. So it is true that as you get older, problems with erections become more common. But why is that? Well, that's because we tend to get more other medical problems the older we get. If you take good care of yourself, you indeed can still have a very active and healthy sex life. Independent of the origins of where the erectile dysfunction comes from, whether it's psychologic or physical or both, it tends to cause dissatisfaction, stress and anxiety, embarrassment or low self-esteem, relationship problems, and uh, practically speaking, can cause problems with fertility or getting your partner pregnant. So this is a busy slide, but I think it's worth going over. On the uh, left side of your screen, you'll see that the physical causes of erectile dysfunction come from primarily three places. Number one, problems with the smooth muscle relaxation of the penis. So the smooth muscle of the penis is unlike skeletal muscle. So skeletal muscle where you lift weights with, etc., is always at is relaxed. And then when you use it to lift a weight, uh, you have to contract that, that skeletal muscle. The penis is opposite. The penis, the muscle is always contracted, and only when you want to get an erection does the muscle have to relax and allows blood flow into the area. Uh, In order for the smooth muscle to relax, there has to be a signal traveling along the spinal cord in the nerve pathways. And then once the blood vessels dilate, blood has to flow in, and then blood has to be trapped in the penis to keep the erection. So all the causes that we'll talk about in a second can lead to problems with either relaxation of the smooth muscle, uh, arterial inflow, or venous trapping, or a combination of those things. Uh, This cartoon here, which I've shown in other talks, this is a flaccid penis and this is an erect penis. And you can see that there's blood engorging these chambers called the corpora cavernosa. And this blood has to be trapped by the outside liner of the penis, right? So an analogy I like to draw is the penis is like a bike tire. And in order for the bike tire to be inflated, assuming it's flat to start with, you have to hook up an air pump to it and you have to pump the air in. In this case, the analogy is to that of blood. So the faster the air flows in, or the better the blood flow to the area, the faster the erection is going to occur, putting air, or blood in this case, uh, into the uh, penis or bike tire respectively. Now... Imagine, if you will, if there were holes in the bike tire. No matter how much air you pumped in, the bike tire would never get hard because the air would leak out after a certain point of filling. So that's what also happens to some men with something called venous leak. So this integrity of this outside lining of the penis uh, is compromised. And so now when you try to get or keep an erection, blood flows out at the same rate that it's flowing in. And so it can never really get hard. So men who have problems with the venous leak will tend to have uh, no problems getting an erection, and they'll kind of get a partial response, but then they can't get a very full erection or it goes away very quickly. So what are some specific medical problems that lead to problems with erections or risk factors? Well, I'm going to skip the first three because they are the most important. We're going to come back to them. But let's talk about some of the other causes. First of all, medications. So... Unfortunately, there are medications that we have to take because of medical problems like high blood pressure, depression, etc., that end up causing problems with erections. The most common offenders are beta blockers, uh, antidepressants, and 
one that is often uh, used too often in this country based on the opioid epidemic are narcotics. So narcotics are really common cause of problems with erections. Turns out that pain medication chronically downregulates your ability to produce testosterone, and this leads to problems with uh, all of the systems mentioned on the other part of the slide. So chronic narcotic use can cause problems with erections. Smoking is a very well-known cause of problems with erections, and if you stop smoking, your penis will get better somewhere on the order of what drugs like Viagra, Levitra, and Cialis can provide. Um, so a pretty impressive response if you can quit smoking. High cholesterol also causes problems with erections uh, because it tends to clog the blood vessels uh, with that cholesterol-like stuff. Same thing for a high blood pressure can cause problems with erections because it has problems with inflow into the penis. Interestingly, uh, high blood pressure is one of the few listed uh, points on the slide which both the high blood pressure itself can cause problems with erections, but the treatment for high blood pressure is even more of a problem because typically men will get beta blockers for high blood pressure, and so both the disease and the treatment for it cause problems with erections. Uh, neurologic disorders like Parkinson's disease and multiple sclerosis affect the nerves, which affect the initial signal going to the penis. And then I would lump, lump obesity and metabolic syndrome into the same bin. So if you are too heavy, uh, you tend to develop this condition called metabolic syndrome where you have high insulin levels, you get a lot of body fat around the waist, you develop high cholesterol, so all these things kind of gang up against you and negatively affect the penis. People who don't get good sleep also have problems with erections. There's some interesting data on shift workers, how they have problems with both their testosterone levels and their erections. Peyronie's disease is a bend of the penis due to scar tissue, and this can also cause problems with erections. Uh, and uh, will be talked about on other videos by one of my partners, Dr. Ziegelman. Alcoholism and other forms of substance abuse can also cause problems with erections. Uh, you know, modest to minor consumption of alcohol is not affiliated with problems with erections, but anytime it becomes more of a serious issue, then yes, uh, the penis will suffer. And finally, of course, surgeries or injuries that affect uh, the pelvic area or spinal cord will cause problems with uh, erections. Now, I'd like to go back to the top three because they deserve special attention. First of all, heart disease. So I'm going to make a separate video about the combination or the, I'm sorry, the, the correlation or cause and effect of heart disease and erectile dysfunction and vice versa. Turns out that the penis is a very sensitive predictor of problems with heart disease. So if you're a young man, I'd say anybody less than age 50 who develops erectile dysfunction that doesn't go away after a few months, you should have your, your heart checked out. Why? Because the blood vessels going to the penis are smaller than the heart vessels, blood vessels going to the heart. And so if you have problems with erections, it's just a matter of time before you're also going to have problems with blockage going to the heart, which can cause a heart attack, etc. Diabetes is one of the most common causes of erectile dysfunction in the United States. Again, this is related to obesity uh, being too heavy, but when you have diabetes for many years, it's pretty rare that you can get good erections without the help of pills or you know, more advanced treatments. Finally, any treatment for prostate cancer, whether it's a prostatectomy, which is a surgery, radiation uh, in the form of either external beam or brachytherapy, cold therapy or cryotherapy to the prostate, hormonal therapy, all these different treatments for prostate cancer, they cause collateral damage and that, that typically will cause problems with erections. So when we look at men with severe problems with erectile dysfunction, the guys that I end up doing surgery on to fix, the vast majority of them have one of these three causes as their underlying problems of um, erectile dysfunction. Either A, they had a prostate surgery of some kind, B, they have diabetes that's been long, uh, long standing, or C, they have vascular problems, uh, heart disease, etc. I do want to spend a few uh, more moments on the fact that, you know, as you get older, it is not inevitable that you'll get problems with erections. There are very many studies which show that 80-year-olds are having sex very often without the need for medications. Why? Because they are overall very healthy. If you take good care of your penis, your penis will take good care of you. One of my mentors, uh, 
taught me when I was uh, a medical student. And indeed, it's true. So, and any activity that you can do, which is good for your heart, is also good for your penis. So, stopping smoking, exercise, eating more fruits and vegetables, losing weight, avoiding stress, getting better sleep, all these things are not only going to be good for your overall health, your heart health, but it's also going to uh, improve your sex life. Thanks for watching this video on erectile dysfunction risk factors. I hope you learned something today. As always, if you want to schedule an appointment with us, please call the number on the screen. Until next time, Toby Kohler signing off from Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota.